Hey, my friend. Today we're diving into a fun and growing trend here in Arizona, golf cars. <laughs> and put down your clubs because these little vehicles have become more than just a way to get around the course. They become a big part of many of our Arizona neighborhoods. In this video, we're breaking down why golf cars are so popular, the pros and cons of owning one, how to maintain them, and some essential etiquette tips for the road. And you'll want to stick around until the end of this video because we're going to give you the top three things to consider before buying a golf car. And hey, if you like this video, do us a quick favor and give us a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. We've got a new State 48 Homeowner Podcast episode every week providing valuable content to Arizona homeowners just like you to help you take the best care of your Arizona home, connect with your community, and know your Arizona real estate market. So let's get into it. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. So we're here with uh, the owner of Custom Golf Cars, Todd Crouch. How you doing, Todd? Good. So let's talk about the growing trend of golf cars in Arizona community. We see them in just about every neighborhood. We see them in East Mark. We see them in Adora Trail, Seville. We see them in uh, like Morrison Ranch, uh, a lot of communities. Why are they so popular? They're a, a, a fun way to get around. They're very inexpensive to operate. When you look at the insurance, average of about 100 bucks a year, which I only paid that in my car, but um, <laughs> not having to put fuel in it. Uh, plates are, are cheap. It's the cheapest. Least expensive. Least expensive. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, no, they're, they're, they're popping up everywhere. We've also got Rich Milburn from our team. It seems to be one of the trends that you know, we don't know, always see these trends happening this way, but one of the few trends that starts in the active adult communities and, and bleeds into the younger communities. You get the episode of Senior Pimp My Ride Golf <laughs> yeah. Car. It's uh I'll tell you, and I was just thinking of this as we were talking, is it used to be you go to the restaurant in the neighborhood or whatever, and who's got the nicest car, who's mm -hmm. got the convertible. Now it's, look at that guy's golf cart. Yeah. Look at that one there. And they <laughs> deck him out with, you know, and we have such a migrant community here that people color them up with your Packers, with your Vikings, oh, with yeah. whatever. The teams. best looking ones are the Packers ones. Yeah, but they <laughs> seem to never work. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love Packer fans. Um, but it's... It's a statement to their own personality to how they doll them up with the, yeah. the crazy lighting to the sound systems to the wheels and tires, the lifted, the colors, what they match them to the seats, the rims, the color of the, of the uh, car itself. The, the custom bodies, when they, they make them look like Escalades or Bentleys, I love those. Anymore, to do something like that, people don't realize. I mean, it, it used to be... You could take a, a, a three, you know, club car off the golf course, and then most of those manufacturers of the golf cart bodies, the fancy ones, it's for an easygoer club car. Mm -hmm. You could get one of those relatively cheap as a dealer. You could fit this body on there that you pay. You, you pay five, six, eight grand just for the body, mm -hmm. and then you got to get it painted. Yeah. Which to do it and do it right, that's another couple grand. Then you got to fit it on. I mean, you, you, you get can, one of those done. You, you're you're going to have a thirty, forty thousand dollars golf you can cart to do it some, right. You can spend some coin, like razor type oh, yeah. coin or new car type coin, on decking <laughs> these oh, out. Yeah. Oh no, definitely. But and it's it is a it's a way to go out, enjoy the day, go to your neighbor's play. You can even use them for golf. Or even, golf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. But it's 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 got so many avenues of use that especially for a lot of you know if you're talking about the senior community that may be a snowbird they have one car what a secondary car yeah and it just works now you, you know, we, we were talking to, you know that you have to pay attention to the rules of golf cars though there's speed limit restrictions you know which these things only have brakes that are so big so you don't want a 50 mile an hour mm -hmm. golf car but you know in some communities you can get to your stores you can go to your local restaurants all that. But, but you guys are also doing the parades and community building too, don't you? Yes. Matter of fact, in, in SVE last year, well, we do it every year for Christmas, there is a huge golf cart parade. And it's probably got 60, 70 golf cars in it that everybody goes out and decorates them to the nines. And I'm talking, we've had friends that do cutouts, put sleighs, reindeer, snowmen, all kinds of stuff and they get their thumping bumping stereos going you got every christmas song playing at the same time driving down the road people throwing candy out or 
maybe other things too. Uh, <laughs> um, and to, uh, little, the street. little fireball going out yeah, there. A little fireball. <laughs> we we did the one in Eastmark. They do that too. Oh yeah. We yes. did the one in Eastmark because my my wife Kelly her her, uh, her sister lives in Eastmark, and uh, that's where that PA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll yeah, have you, you hear my wife on that thing a lot. <laughs> we'll, we'll have you guys come out and enjoy, enjoy yeah. the golf cart parade. But it's a way because you see a lot of the community members who are wheelchair restricted, walker restricted, that can't go over to a lot of places, can come right out of the edge of their driveways and enjoy. And you'll see the golf cart switching around back and forth, going back and forth across the street, talking to people. And it's all blocked off. We do it right. Um, and it makes it a community event. And it's... It's Easton Mark does yeah. that. Morrison Ranch does that. Mm-hmm. Um, Morrison Ranch, and then they have their their huge, huge Halloween shutoff yeah. there. Well, a lot of the neighborhood will come in with their golf carts, which is easier to get around than the car, so they can go see things. It's just the way of the future, I guess, if you will, as far as community get around. And and you're doing an event coming up here where you're going to do a golf cart wash. Yeah, we're doing the Welcome Back Golf Cart Wash. And that's November 9th? November 9th, that's 10 like to ne- 1. Next weekend or so? Yeah, yeah, and it's right here in the parking lot at the Sunland Village East. Um, always looking for people that want to come out and help us wash golf cars. Custom golf cars will be there. They're going to be out there actually doing a free check on the cars. So mm-hmm. as people come in looking like what he was talking about, the corrosion on wires, batteries, and all that type of stuff to make sure there's no glaring problem. You know, we need to get this taken care of. And then we'll detail the cart, pass out whatever, and we'll have other vendors out there. We'll have the clubs in the community out there just as an event, and it's based around golf cars and people. Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and I don't want to buy your house unless you really want me to. For the last 25 years, we've been helping people just like you navigate all their options when looking to buy and sell. We gather all your options in one place and do all the homework for you so you can make the best decision for you and your family. Our team offers a one-stop solution. We work to gather as many offers as possible for you to help you make the best decision. You don't have to worry about repairs, commissions, or timing. Need flexibility? We've got you covered with flexible closing options. So whatever condition your home is in, we're here to help. And for whatever reason you might be thinking about selling, call us first, let us help you navigate all of your options. Whether you need to remove a contingency, sell fast, or get the highest price possible, we are here to find the right solution for you. So if you're ready to explore your options, contact me today. Let's figure out the best way to serve you. So let's talk about the pros and cons of uh, golf cars. Well, one of the big pros is that they're they're, they're really fun to drive, <laughs> especially when the weather's right. Yeah. Um, I think I talked about this before, the, the, the lesser expensive registration, yeah. you know, not have to put fuel in them. Um, one of the cons, I guess, is that they're, they're only supposed to be used 35 mile an hour and, and below speed yeah. limit. You can cross anything, but that kind of limits you to get to some stores and you'll find most people, you well, know, I can go down that 40, just, it's just a little bit. And, and in certain, certain areas, that's probably okay. Certain areas you you shouldn't, <laughs> um, so that that can be that can be a con there for sure. Yeah. Um, you can turn it into a con, you know, as the retired law enforcement side of it. Um, when parents and grandparents allow their unlicensed kids and grandkids to drive them. Yeah, it is a vehicle. It is a vehicle. DOT sir, DOT regulations, the whole thing. And if your unlicensed driver is out driving and causes an accident, damage, or hurts or kills somebody, the owner or parent is liable. Mm -hmm. And your insurance, because you're allowing an unlicensed driver to drive this on a public, even it doesn't even have to be public, they may not cover this. This could be a massive civil issue um, for you. And someone has to live with it, you know, of anything like that. Well, with the the explosion of different brands of golf carts, there used to be about five or six major manufacturers of golf carts in the U.S. There's almost a hundred right now, and you'll see them at the ones at Tractor Supply and Lowe's and all that. They're not selling them as motor vehicles. They they're not a licensed. They're not a dealer. They're they're not an Arizona State dealer. Um, so they're selling them more like toys, and that's where the kids kind of think, well, it's a toy. I can. It's not a toy. It's far from a toy. Is, I mean, and, and you and can there's also, another aspect that we look at too well going to local restaurants which send, sometimes you could even refer to bars and your golf cart is all fine doing it responsibly 
but you can get a DUI in a golf cart, yeah. golf car. Um, that's, I mean, there's no easy out because of it. Now, if you're in a community, some may choose to take the golf course home. But, you know, oh, by the way, these golf cars we're talking about in all these communities. They, they can be you, used for golf, too. They can be yeah, used for yeah, golf, yeah. too. Yeah. It's amazing. What a concept. <laughs> so let's talk about maintenance. What are we doing? There's really not a ton of maintenance on, on electric cars other than the obvious tire pressure, which is one of the most neglected mm-hmm. things that happen because it's really hard on the batteries. Uh, and that's just something that you have to check that periodically. You, it doesn't lean like your car. It doesn't look like it has a flat tire. But the big ones... The batteries, the motor, the controller, um, making sure that those connections are, are tight. They loosen up, causes heat, melt stuff, could cause a fire. Um, not, not, not good on anything. So, and, and, of course, the greasing it and checking your differential oil. Uh, that's something most people wouldn't do themselves. Heck, most of them, like I said, don't even do the tire pressure. <laughs> the difference in batteries now going from your wet cell batteries, you know, the, car, the deep cycle marine type batteries to the lithium style is you don't have as many wire connections, which is a safer aspect. Mm-hmm. But there is... Because we do see garage fires every now and then from from charging stations. Well, that most of that wouldn't necessarily be the charging station. It would be from a corroded wire that hasn't been maintained, and mm-hmm. then it, it arcs. But, those, but I will tell you from personal experience, there is one thing when you have a golf cart that's lithium that you have to have to carry with you, and it's never mentioned until you need it. And I believe it's a 10 millimeter Allen because if your lithium goes out, it's not going to give you any warning and your lithium stops. The golf cart comes to a screeching halt in a hurry. And that depends on the brand. That depends on the brand. There are certain brands that that are a lot easier to to rectify that if that does happen. True. But you you have to disconnect the brake because it's an electric (laughs) brake. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it's it's very gets your attention, but it doesn't happen often. But keep your 10 10 millimeter, right? It, it, on on certain brands, yes. yeah, they're they're different on all of them. But they uh, we we were one of the last ones to go to lithium batteries. We've only been doing them for about a year, and they've been out for probably close to ten. Yeah. The biggest problem they had to begin with was the all these different countries getting into this and different metals and and in in the the perfect scenario, they get too hot and they would they would cause fires. There yeah. were some huge issues with fires. I know, I know a couple people went out of business in the think, golf cart business. I think Tesla has something to do with yeah, you know yeah, they. <laughs> Yeah, but so at any rate, they got that they got that worked out relatively easy. Well, speaking of maintenance, um, my wife and I we actually do what we call a summer home watch program where we mm-hmm. check keep mm-hmm. the houses, yep, check yep. the weeds, yep. and all that. And a lot of them, a lot of the residents have golf carts, and we've gotten the request several times of every month, please charge my golf cart. And I've tried to tell them that you have a lithium, don't oh, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you don't. So need can to. you clarify that, please? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Lithiums when they are when they go to sleep or you put them to sleep, mm-hmm. you're leaving for. Months, mm-hmm. more than a week. Yeah, they'll click off on their own too, right? Yeah, a lot of them most do. of them will yeah. go to sleep by themselves. Mm-hmm. It, it takes seventy-two hours usually yeah. for them to go to sleep. Uh, but you might as well put it to sleep yourself. But if you forgot, don't worry, it, it'll go to sleep while it's in its hibernation sleep mode. It 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 only drains the batteries between one and two percent a month. So you, it. Virtually six months will not hurt. Yeah. And you don't have a memory issue with lithium, nope. correct? So you nope. don't have to, if it stays, it right. gets down to 70, 65, yeah. Yeah. whatever, no. you're not hurting the battery. No, no, no. It's, yeah. it's, and they've become more affordable. They're, yeah, we, we, we've been doing a ton of lithiums and they, uh, yeah. they, are, they are the best thing to do right now. Well, they take a lot of weight off of the golf cart, Which even though the lithium's heavy. brings you to a drawback. Uh, the, the biggest drawback. There's some golf carts out there that the seats are really hard foam and the tires have real thin oh, tread yeah. and they ride really rough. I won't say what they are, but everybody knows them. You put a lithium in it, you're taking about 350 pounds out of the bottom of that car. Now it has no suspension. You're on the top of the suspension. Every bump. We, we've, we've done a handful of lithiums. People call back and they're like, Wait, what the heck can we do? Well, you're not doing air ride yet? No, we throw sandbags in, oh. in where the batteries were. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's talk golf cart etiquette. All right. Etiquette. A couple of things I'll start, if you don't mind. Yep. Some of the things I remember as I was growing with my golf carts is a lot of times we get the front windshields tinted so to keep the sun out. Well, you got to remember at night, you don't see the pedestrians, even if you have lights, and you got to be really, really careful. But the same traffic laws apply. Mm-hmm. You need to you know, have your signal lights. You can either do your hand signals or use signals that, come with, that you can get installed. You're, it has to have brakes if you're on the road, the brake lights and all that. Pulling out of driveways, driving through the neighborhoods, they're quick and they're agile. 
It doesn't mean you can go zipping through places and be considerate of the others. Common sense is the biggest part of etiquette that I see. Yeah. You? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Common sense is, is, is there. One thing kind of with the windshield thing, so many people if you use Windex and paper towels on a plexiglass windshield. Scratch you won't up. be able to see through it during the day. Yeah. <laughs> so sun hits it. I had a lady that ran into a parked car because she, the sun was hitting that windshield just right, and she had used paper towels well, mine, to dry it. Mine's it funny. My windshield has air conditioning. I can fold it down. Yeah, they yeah, get the airflow. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's easy. <laughs> now, another thing to keep in mind is, you know, there are some communities that do have golf cart paths. Correct. And it's becoming a bigger trend in a lot of communities around the country. Yeah. But most of our communities do not have golf cart paths. Those are walking paths. Correct. And they are not for golf cars. And so when you are going there, it's generally a violation of your HOA and uh, quite possibly, you know, some larger rules you know, if, it's at, a, at stake. if it's a city-maintained yeah. walking path, you're going to have city code violations. Yeah. And I've, so, I've had... um, you know, if, you, if you've let your kids go, that's generally something... I, I know in, in my neighborhood, people are taking videos and photos of the kids and posting it to the mm-hmm. neighborhood page. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, they're running people down. It's, it's just not safe. So. Correct. Well, with, if you have plates on the thing, you probably shouldn't be on the sidewalk. Yeah. I mean, well, even if it requires plates and you don't, you shouldn't yeah. be on the sidewalk. Yeah. But, uh, you know, big etiquette thing, don't, don't be running people down. <laughs> no, no. Um, and, and just and because it, and it just does be aware miles. of what your kids are doing if, if if your kids are out there like you said before it's a safety thing but be be aware of what your kids are doing yes i mean i'd love to have my granddaughters go out and play on it all day but it's just not responsible mm-hmm. just not and just as promised things you should consider when buying a golf cart the first thing know your use case what are you going to do are you going to be taking family around are you how many people because you can see golf carts that are set up from two, four, six, eight people. Mm-hmm. Are you going to use it on a golf course? Are you going to be t- hauling stuff where you might need a, a truck bed style option? Um, a lot of people like lifted, low profile tires, the high knobby tires. But understand, there's a high knobby tire may look cool, but you're on the road all the time, not using it on canal banks and things like. That. You're going to go through tires faster. But and are are you going to be using it? Are you going to go golfing in it? And are you going to golf on an 18 hole course that's flat? Are you going to go? Are you planning to go do 36 holes in Gold, in Gold Canyon where it's hilly? Well, and again, where you live, you know. But that's also another thing. When you're if you're going to take this and use it on a golf course. You better get golf course approved tires. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The knobbies they won't. They yeah, won't you go out there and you're gonna no, you'll tear up a course. But yeah. also make sure that battery is gonna last Correct, on the hills is, and things like and that. And you can touch on the batteries, but yeah. there's well, different... the 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 four passengers. The one, one of the most common is a regular golf cart with a seat added on the back rear facing. Mm-hmm. Those are okay on almost every golf course I've ever seen. Correct, as long as they're not if the they're the stretched tires. ones that you could put four people facing forward and still have your club bags on which is just like a six passenger with the rear facing mm-hmm. too much weight mm-hmm. the, most courses it. will not it'll, allow because it'll sink and trench correct yeah correct so now if so, you've got the four seats is there room for your clubs that's the other thing that you'd want to consider if you're going to do that because i'll tell you you get that back seat rear facing seat that the course doesn't have a problem with because you can't put four people in bags yeah. your bags take place yeah, of where the, the people are, go, for the yeah. most people well that isn't set up for that from the factory. Mm-hmm. So that is all aftermarket stuff. And they don't work the same for everybody. Yeah. Everybody's bags are different, how they fit on there. Mm-hmm. And you might have to strap the bottom because it might, it depends on how you drive too. Yeah. <laughs> it might, might be kicking them out. I've got people that break stuff off on the back because mm-hmm. we're hanging clubs off the back. And, and uh, so, yeah, knowing, knowing what you're going to use it for is well, huge. For instance, what you're talking about, my golf cart is a four-seater. Uh, the back seat folds open and I have a truck bed mm-hmm. with the tr- with the seat folded open I can't put golf cart bag or golf bags on it with it closed the seats there I can put golf bags but nobody's going to sit back there comfortably because yeah. the golf bags are there yeah. so there's different configurations and what you're going to use it for all right number two Which, do research on your dealer and oh, your manufacturer oh yeah yeah there are so many things so so, so many toys out there that that good luck on getting them fixed when you need some service. Uh, 
the dealer that sells it to you, as well as the manufacturer of what it is, do, get, get as, do as much research as you can on the companies. You well, know, even make your sure warranty then, right. if they say it's got a year warranty, who, who honors it? It, it, it? it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean That's when, I mean. when lithiums first came out, yeah. the, they were given a 10-year free replacement warranty on lithiums. Not anymore. Now, we Eco has an eight-year. It's mm-hmm. only replaced for three and then prorated for sure. the next five. But I mean, talking with, these, with a lot of the... The golf carts that are not necessarily sold by a dealer, they might be sold by a retail establishment. That just, there's there's like no that. there's no. But but they may say there's a one year warranty. I don't know what they say, but if that's the case, who is the warranty center? I guarantee you're not going back to Lowe's and having one of the no. mechanics fix it because mm-hmm. no, no. their parts can be unit specific. Where do you get the parts? Who's going to be able to put fix there, that again, for you? If they go out of business, yeah. What do you do then? That was my, my, my point on the on the lithiums. Mm-hmm. There were some of them that had they're not around anymore. Yeah. So do you think those people said no, they don't have one. Yeah. They, they're it's gone. Done. They're done. But knowing where and you know, if you look around your neighborhood and you see people that have been around golf carts for a while, you'll see the little insignias on the golf cart of where they got it. There's several companies in the Mace area that have been around for years. I mean Todd's company Custom Golf Cars has been around on East Main Street. There was it seventy seven fifty five or something. Seventy nine thirty five. Seventy nine thirty five. Eighty nine. East, yeah, since nineteen eighty nine. Pretty sure his family is relying on that paycheck to eat. He's not fly by night, <laughs> you know. So those are where you want to look to be okay. I know I can go get service. I know they have that. They have the dealership. They're going to have parts. Yes, they and they've a got long, a service department. They have a long running contract with their golf cart suppliers. To be able to know that those parts are there, what's going on, what's trending, what issues might be there, and how to fix it. And that's when we're looking at uh, ones at like Home Depot or at uh, you know, uh, you know, some of these other uh, stores. Uh, we're, we're not sure that we're going to be able to find parts. No, and and, and unfortunately, that's one of my biggest challenges. I, I, we've we've always tried to help everybody out, no matter what kind of car you had. And that's that's something that within the last five six years, there's certain cars that I just they call call me up and ask me if we'll work on it. And I'm I'm sorry I, I just can't do well, it because I know I'm going to run into problems. For example, my golf cart's like a 16 or a 17. It's an easy go, and it's got LED lights in the front. But if you look at golf cart years, the light configurations change. I know I can go to him and get the easy go light that fits my cart for the cutout in the fiberglass and it'll plug right in, plug and play, and you're down the road. A lot of carts, if those part manufacturers aren't reliable, you can't, how you, you put a round golf cart light in a rectangular hole. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I just know that the first day, everything's beautiful. But if there is an issue, where do you want to go to get it taken care of? So let's talk about what if it's pre owned? What are we looking for? Well, best advice I could give anybody on that is don't be don't be afraid of the dealers. Private people are asking as much as the dealers, and you don't get a warranty, and 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 you you just don't know what you're getting from a private person as much as you would from a reputable dealer. But from a private person, do your due diligence. You know, um, we talk about it in real estate all the time: mm-hmm. a due diligence and inspection. You know, grab a trailer and take it to. Somebody who you know, oh, I've pay, done that. I've pay, done that for a lot of people. Pay some money and have it gone through, but use your your own eyes. Is this golf cart taken care of? Is it been stored in a garage or in a in a covered place, or has it been outside? What do the batteries look like? What do the connections look like? What have all the little wiring looks like? How many accessories have been added by you know electrical tape and pliers versus proper connectors and all that? We are talking up to forty eight volts of charge going mm-hmm. on in this. That's not anything to be joking around with. Make sure it's it's proper. Look at the tires. Look, I mean, how they wear, are because they wear differently front to back on on these. Are they maintained? Are they pressurized? The general things that say, yeah, this person's taking care of this makes a huge difference. Yeah, because um, they they can be relatively inexpensive to own until they're not because you didn't take care of it. And to take care of is not hard. So if people want to dive in deeper and uh, go check out some golf cars uh, on the sales floor, how do they get a hold of you? Well, they can call us, stop in. We, we've been in the What's same What's your phone spot. number there? Uh, 480-373-6176. And you guys have a full showroom yes. right there on East, yes. East Apache Trail. It's Main yeah. Street Apache Trail. In between Sossaman and the 202. Correct. 
And I've been in there. And you got some beautiful, beautiful. As a matter of fact, I had to leave because <laughs> I was starting to have bad thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> we do take care of training stuff. Yeah, no. I Especially just, I, easy goes. So if you like this content, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff like it, hit the gas pedal on that subscribe button. And, or the uh, accelerator. We'll or the accelerator. Because <laughs> they're not all gas. <laughs> they're not all gas. No. Yeah. And we'll see, you next, yeah. we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions, and more at state48homeowner.com.